aspect of the constitutional provision. That says that a member of parliament must be in parliament for not, must not absent himself for more than 15 days. Do you know that the court asking him to absent himself for 50, uh, uh, to be in court every day means that he will not be in parliament, parliament maybe for more than 15 days. So this is nothing but persecution. On the basis of that, we are saying we are not cooperating. House to commence and proceed with ordinary business of the day they must be in attendance at least one third of the members of parliament apart from the person presiding. Mr. Speaker, that is the commencement column. Commencement column, you need 92. Hold minimum. on, hold on, let Mr. me. Mr. Speaker, let, may you I hold on. Mr. Hold on. Speaker, I am not yielding. I am not yielding. Honorable member, I'm saying hold on, sir, you are not yielding. If you've been following the media houses over the weekend, all is on parliament. The fact that we don't get the numbers to do business. And I think it is coming on becoming. So, honorable members, I think today will be the last day that we will raise this issue of quorum. So, the fifth, I am urging you to do more. Uh, on that note, I'm bringing proceedings to a close and I join the House to tomorrow, 10 o'clock in the forenoon. Many colleagues are currently out there campaigning. In fact, one person who is a key person to solve our problem today is Dr. Baumia, our Vice President of the country. He's not at the office as we speak. He's campaigning somewhere. What has the absence of minority members who actually said we were not coming to work yesterday. Got to do with the reason why your members could not be up to the number that formed quorum. So the problem is yourselves. If you produce your 138 members tomorrow morning, we shall pro provide our 137 members to, uh, tomorrow morning. They are supposed to behave as representatives of their constituents. So if you tell me we should marshal our numbers, as if the house is one-sided, and the House is just minded to do only government business. No, we don't do only government business. Today, if you listen to what happened, what did we do? What private business? Statements that were, were, were delivered, they are all basically private business. We shouldn't accept that argument. It's a flawed and weak position to say that, marshal your numbers. This is a House of the Republic, Parliament of the Republic, and it is made up of two sides. They should tell us why they are not participating in the public business. These are the questions you should be asking them. Why would they go for committee meetings and yet will not come to the chamber? Why would they come and take tea and sign and then they just withdraw? It's a crude tactics just to frustrate government business. But for me, we are very disappointed. We are extremely disappointed. They came in their numbers and then when we had to prosecute the business of the house, they withdrew from the chamber. That is most unfortunate. And that is not how representatives of the people are supposed to behave. Leaders must sit. As we cannot continue like this, that we oh, we will go to court, we will not come, we will raid quorum. Who are you hurting? If the country broke or country not broke, we are dead inside. So I, 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 I think we must take different approach to all this. I will appeal to the minority that if there is anything that they think they are doing to, to hurt the government, I, I'm sorry, it's hurting their own constituents. Because if they take uh, um, decisions that will affect every member of this country, their constituents are part of this country. So I will appeal to them that I think it's about time that we look at this thing holistically. The leadership have to sit. I think parliament leaders have to sit and look at how we can address this issue. But this, I mean, this part no, will not help us. I don't think it's something that we need to continue on that, uh, on that side. Sending the rates with which any time NGOs felt that they needed children or they needed victims to parade in their various organizations, they rushed to the Volta Lake and rescued children from my constituency. And so again, it didn't come to me as a surprise when the BBC did their thorough work and in the end, it came to the limelight that these NGOs were more of a targeted institution who were trying so much to meet their annual target. And so it didn't really matter whether indeed these children were actual victims or they were not. 
And so with me, I don't think the objective of rescue, because of course, when it comes to issues of trafficking, there are serious subjects and serious matters that need to be addressed. However, I feel that uh, their mode of operating or the, the way of uh, going about their business is not one of the best. And I feel uh, we should regulate their activities and see how best they can we can protect the ordinary Ghanaian child as well as making sure that real uh, uh, perpetrators are brought to book.